Okay. So, I just started reading Hosea, right? And Hosea is like, like mind blowing, all right? It's about God's love. It's waking us up from the reality of what love isn't. You know, the difference between lust and love. It shows us God's love for us. It talks about sexual immorality. And I'm only, like, I've read a bunch of it so far. I haven't finished it. But, like, y'all, y'all don't understand, okay? Y'all don't even understand. Just go read Hosea. Like, just go read it. But anyway, as I'm reading Hosea, I was like, man, God knows exactly how it feels to be cheated on. Like, no cap, like, for real. Like, a lot of you guys watching right now, you know what it feels like to love somebody and for them to be unfaithful to you. You know what it feels like to love someone and to have them love someone more than you or something more than you, you know? But so does God, like, so does God. He understands that. He, okay, okay, let me just, let me just so, read, okay? I'm only gonna talk about Hosea 1 to 3 right now just because, like, this is where I caught the revelation, okay? But in Hosea 1, we meet Hosea and Hosea is a man and God speaks to him and God's like, yo, Hosea, go find a whore, go find a prostitute and make her your wife and have some kids with her. Literally, like, I'm serious. Go check for yourself. God literally tells somebody, tells this man to go find a woman who sleeps around with other men and make her his wife. He tells him to do now, that. I imagine that Hosea was like, why are you telling me to do that? Like, I don't know what man in his right mind would want to marry a prostitute, would want to find a woman knowing that she sleeps around with other men and make her his wife. Like, I don't think any man in his right mind would do that. But God asked Hosea to do this. He told him, yo, do this. So Hosea was being obedient and he did. He found a woman who was a whore. He found a prostitute and he made her his and wife. God says why, like God tells Hosea why he's asking him to do this. In Hosea one, God says, find a whore and marry her. Make this whore the mother of your children. And here's why. This whole country has become a whorehouse, unfaithful to me, God. So God is literally saying, listen, this is gonna be symbolic. This is gonna be my parable, my metaphor, what I'm doing right now has a purpose he's telling hosea like listen i'm telling you to marry this whore because my people have been a whore to me and i know i know you're not like catching it yet but let me just keep explaining it and then you'll catch also, it also okay? really quick i have not used that word like like ever even in the world i never called somebody a whore but i'm only saying that because it's in the bible and i'm like trying to you know whatever anyway whatever. god's like listen people are being unfaithful to me. So I want you to go find somebody who's unfaithful and marry them, all right? This is where we are right now in Hosea 1. So Hosea does it. He finds a woman knowing that she sleeps around with other men and makes her his wife, marries her, right? Now, I imagine that this woman, her name was Gomer, okay? So Hosea married a prostitute named Gomer. I imagine that when they got married, Gomer didn't stop hooking up with other men. She didn't stop right away because he married her knowing that this was who she is, knowing that this is what she was doing, knowing that she was an unfaithful woman, knowing that she was living this kind of lifestyle. He married her knowing these things about her. So I imagine that she continued to do these things regardless. I also imagine that because listen, scripture doesn't give direct details all the time, you know? Um, and it doesn't tell us how Gomer felt, but I imagine that Gomer was probably really surprised that a man was trying to marry her knowing that she was hooking up with a bunch of other dudes all the time. Like, I imagine that she was surprised. She probably felt really taken aback. Like, whoa, like, why is this guy trying to wife me right now? I hook up with men all the time. You know, what, what makes him think I'm going to commit to him? You know, like, I imagine she was probably really surprised in the way that she was living her life, not used to having men really want her, not used to having men um, treat her right. You know, all of a sudden, here comes some man named Hosea, who's actually a good man and wants to treat her right. Like, what? I don't know. I don't know. That's how I imagine she felt. I also imagine that Hosea didn't want to marry her, but he was obe being obedient to God. You know, he was trusting God. So that's just how I so, feel, okay? 
To put this on personal terms, when you get cheated on or when you are with somebody knowing that they are unfaithful to you, obviously it hurts. Obviously, like that is very painful. You know, you love somebody, you want to be with them, um, you're committed to them and they're not committing to you. They're lying, they're being unfaithful. That's a very painful thing to go through and most of us know what that feels like, but so does God. God literally said, my people are being unfaithful to me. My people, they've become now, a whorehouse. Usually when somebody gets cheated on, they go ham. You know, they trying to get revenge. They trying to, they trying to go hard. They be, they, psh, I bust the windows out your car. After I saw you laying next to her. I didn't want to, but I took my turn. I'm glad I did it because you had to learn. <laughs> Oh sorry, my goodness. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but for real, like that's usually how we are. We want revenge. We want to hurt the person back. We want to make them feel how they made us feel. We want justice. That's what we want. After Hosea and Gomer got married, God tells them to have children together. So they end up having three kids, right? And the first one was named Jezreel. And God said, name him Jezreel because it won't be long now before I'll make the people of Israel pay for the massacre at Jezreel. I'm calling it quits on the kingdom of Israel. Payday is coming. I'm going to chop Israel's bows and arrows into kindling in the valley of Jezreel. So the first kid that they have, God's like, yo, you guys are gonna name him Jezreel because I'm sick of it. I'm done, I'm quitting on my people, I've had enough. And that's pretty much how people react when they get cheated on. I'm done, I'm over it, bye. Like, bye, Felicia. God was saying the same thing, right? And then they have their second kid. Um, this time it was a daughter. And God told Hosea, name this daughter No Mercy. Her name was literally No Mercy. Name her No Mercy because I'm fed up with Israel. I've run out of mercy. There's no more forgiveness. This is exactly how, this is usually how people feel. When they find out that the person that they love is being unfaithful to them, when they find out that the person that they've committed to, the person that they've married and want to spend their lives with is being unfaithful, they're done. I don't forgive you. I got no mercy for you. Sometimes people are like, I hate you. You're the worst person ever. Go, like get out of my sight, leave me be. Like I'm done with you. That's how people are and we can see clearly in scripture that this is how God was feeling about his people being unfaithful to him giving them chance after chance after chance and you guys know how that is too we you know we give people chance after chance after chance and they just keep hurting us over and over and over right god feels that way too he understands how that feels anyways they have their third child and it was another boy so they had two boys and one girl it was another boy and god said name this son nobody his name was nobody Name him nobody, because you have become nobodies to me, and I, God, have become nobody to you. So God is saying, listen, you don't love me. You don't care about me. You don't think about me. I've become nobody to you. I'm not even a thought in your brain. You know how when, when we're in relationships, we say that actions speak louder than words. This is very clear. As hu in, in humanity, you know, hu humans, we were being unfaithful to God, and, and some of us still are. You know, we were being unfaithful to God. Our actions didn't show God that we loved him. Your words are powerful, yes, but if you don't show somebody that you love them, it don't matter what you say. You know, if you're still doing the same things that you shouldn't be doing, they're not gonna trust you, they're not gonna believe you when you say that you love them, but this is the way that it is with God. He knows your heart. So as people, we were, we were rebelling against him. He said, we became a whorehouse. Not saying that we've all become literal whores. That's not what I mean. And that's not what he's saying. Yes, there are some people who were literally sleeping around with people and people still do this today, but it's also a metaphor. Because in Hosea 3, it shows us that God said, God said. So when we look at Hosea and Gomer, Hosea was a faithful man married to a prostitute woman, right? Knowing that she was sleeping around with other men, knowing that she was doing things on the side, that she had some side pieces, right? So it's the, it's the same way with God, right? This is what he's talking about. He's saying, listen, 
you are my bride. Not saying that we are all literal whores, although there are people who actually sleep around all the time, but he's also saying that you've become a whore in, in a different sense, meaning to your sin. You have been unfaithful to God because you've been, you've been worshiping false idols. You have been putting your boyfriend or your girlfriend before God. You have been involved in gang violence, in drugs, rape, murder, pedophilia, molestation. Our sin is what he's saying. He's saying, my people have become a whorehouse to me. They have become unfaithful to me. They don't think about me anymore. I, I'm not even a thought in their brain because they're so full of, of lust and perversion and all this stuff. So he's not literally calling us whores, but he's saying, hey, what you're doing is acting as a whore. You're being unfaithful to the one who is faithful to you. That's what he's saying. So, and th this is happening today, not even just in the Old Testament, not even just in Hosea. It speaks for today because it's still happening. People still do this to God. People still cheat on God. I'm gonna keep it plain and simple. People are still cheating on God. You are in a relationship with Jesus Christ, and yet you got your side pieces over there. You got your boyfriend that you're having sex with. You got your weed, you got your alcohol, you got your pornography. You're being unfaithful, you see? So God understands how that feels, but watch this now. This is the revelation that I caught about God's love for us. Let me, let me show so, you. So God was using Hosea and Gomer as a symbol for us to show us the gospel in a nutshell, right? Here you have Hosea, a faithful man, loving this woman, knowing she's a prostitute, choosing to commit to her and stay with her and be faithful to her even though she's not faithful to him, right? They have some kids and this is the way that God feels, right? He is committed to us. We are his bride. Even though we're prostitutes, even though we're whores, even though we are unfaithful to God, he chose to make us his knowing our flaws, knowing that we're sinful, knowing that we would make mistakes, knowing how we were. Go uh, Ho Hosea married Gomer knowing she was sleeping around, knowing that this is what she was doing. God chose us knowing that we, that we weren't doing right things, knowing that we were unfaithful to him, knowing that we were doing all this stuff. He still chose to make us his bride through Jesus Christ. Now watch this. So later on in Hosea 1, in Hosea 1, we can see that God was fed up. He was pissed off. He was done. He was like, I'm done. You guys are unfaithful. I've had enough. And most of us have felt that way. But then God says, he says in Hosea 1, 10 through 11, but down the road, the population of Israel is going to explode past counting like sand on the ocean beaches in the very same place where they were once named nobody. They will be named God's somebody. Everybody in Judah and everybody in Israel will be assembled as one people they will choose a single leader. There will be no stopping them. So God is saying, look, I'm, I'm upset, I'm fed up, I'm calling it quits, but one day, there will come a day when the, when the nobodies will become somebodies. The people that he called nobodies will become somebodies, right? The people that he's fed up with, the people that are unfaithful, he's going to forgive them. He's going to have mercy on them. He says that the people of Israel, we are Israel, we are the church. This, he's talking about us. He's saying one day there's going to be so many of his people. There's going to be so many of us. It's going to outnumber the sands of the, of the beaches, right? And he's saying one day we are going to be somebody's. We are going to be his, even though we're unfaithful, even though we've become a house of he whores. Says, in Hosea 2, the first thing he says is, rename your brothers God's somebody. Rename your sisters all mercy. Remember the daughter, he told them to name the daughter no mercy because he was done. He had no more mercy. He ran out of forgiveness. But because of who he is, because of how much he loves us, he's like, look, I know I felt this way, but I'm going to grant you mercy. So everybody that I said had no mercy, rename them all mercy they've received all of my mercy and all of the sons all of the, the lost sons of israel that that he called nobodies he said name them my somebodies they are somebody to me 
what kind of love is that? What kind of love? But I'm so not even all done throughout yet. Throughout Hosea 2, we are literally getting a description of a whore. Like a literal whore. Like it, this this whole passage of Hosea 2 is literally talking about sex and it's talking about promiscuity. It's talking about dressing a certain way. It's talking about seducing people. It's talking about sleeping around with people. Like God is describing like just just read it. Okay, just read it. But towards the end of Hosea 2, God says, I'll make her pay for her indulgence in promiscuous religion, all that sensuous bow worship, and all the promiscuous sex that went with it, stalking her lovers, dressed to kill in lingerie and expensive gowns, and not one thought for me. That's what God says. But God wants us back. He's, he's talking about us. And he wants us back. We are his children and he wants us back, his sons and daughters, right? So in the next passage, he says, but now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start all over again. I'm taking her back out into the wilderness where we had our first date and I will court her. I'll give her bouquets of roses. I'll turn Heartbreak Valley into acres of hope. She will respond like she did as a young girl those days when she was fresh out of Egypt. So all throughout this passage, we see that God is chasing us down. He's talking about the lost sons, the lost daughters, all of us stuck in our ways, living in sin, being unfaithful to him. He chose to marry us as we are, knowing how awful we were, and now he's chasing us down, trying to bring us back to the way that we were as young children before we were tainted, before we were struck in with darkness and evil, you see? He's saying, I'm going to court her. I'm going to, to win he says, her over. I will marry you for good forever. Yes, I'll marry you true and proper in love and tenderness. Yes, I'll marry you and I will never leave you nor let you go. You will know me, God, for who I really am. Listen, listen. Even though we are the way we are, sinners, even though... We are unfaithful to him. We, we choose people over him. We choose things over him. We choose ourselves over him. We choose sin over him. He still chose to marry us. He still wants us. He still loves us so much that he says, I will never leave you. I will not let you go. You are mine. So going back to Homer, uh, to Hosea and Gomer, Going back to Hosea and Gomer, at this point, God told Hosea, start all over. Love your wife again. Your wife who is in bed with her latest boyfriend. Your cheating wife. Love her the way that I, God, love my people. Even as they flirt and party with every other God that takes their fancy. So God is telling Hosea, listen, love her as she is even though she's cheating on you, even though she's being unfaithful, love her the way that I love my people, the way that I love my children, even though they are flirting and partying with other gods. Not And, and when he says other gods, we're not talking about like Zeus and Poseidon and Hades. We're talking about literally anything. God, your God could be money. Your God could be sex before marriage. Your God could be weed. Your God, your God could be pornography. Your God could be anything. You could, even selfishness, pride, anything that you are putting before God, that is what he's talking about. He's saying, love your wife the way that I love my people, even though they are flirting with and, and playing with other false gods. God loves you, even though you're playing with pornography, even though you're, you're smoking weed, even though you're out there banging everybody, even though, you know what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. He's saying, Hosea, I'm going to use you as an example. That's, that's literally what this is. And this is the gospel in a nutshell. Watch this, watch. God ordered him to love her. Knowing that she was cheating, God ordered Hosea to love her. Now watch this. Hosea says, I did it. I paid good money to get her back. It cost me the price of a slave. I'm gonna stop right there. Hosea went to go find his wife who was sleeping with somebody. He had to pay money to get his own wife back. What? He paid for his own wife, right? 
Jesus paid for you. Hold on, hold on. Hosea paid to get his own wife back because he loves her. God sent his only son as the price he paid to get you back because he loves you. But wait, but wait, we're not even done. Hold on, ready? Ready? Hosea says, Then I told her, From now on, you're living with me. No more whoring. No more sleeping around. You're living with me, and I am living with you. Hosea basically told his wife to repent. This is the gospel in, in, in a nutshell. This is the gospel. He bought his wife back at a price. And he said, no more. I've had it. You're done. You are not going to live this way anymore. That's what he said. The same way that God requires us to repent. He paid for us through the sacrificial blood of Jesus Christ. And he calls us all to repent. So this is the revelation I'm trying to tell you. Like, it's God's love. It's God's love. Even though we are the way we are, he loves us and he chose to marry us and make us his bride and he will never leave us or forsake us. He won't let us go and he's calling us to repent. He's calling us to stop and we can see this clearly in the example given here in Hosea 1 to 3. He told Hosea, marry this prostitute, make her your wife, go get her back and tell her to repent. Like, think about what kind of love that is. Like, how many of you have been cheated on could literally look the person that cheated you in the cheated on you in the face and marry them, knowing that they were... Like, how many of you could marry somebody knowing that they were going to be unfaithful? Knowing that they were going to sleep around? <sighs> not me. I could not. I could not. But this was just an example. Now, I'm not saying, like, God's going to tell you to go marry a prostitute. That is not what I'm saying. That is not what this video is about, okay? I'm trying to help you understand the way that God loves us. It's so deep, like, we can't even fathom it. That's the gospel. In Hosea, that's the gospel. That God loves us so much that he literally paid the price to get us back, to make us his bride, to love us as we are, the way that we are, to clean us up, so that we can live with him forever. The same way he showed us with Hosea and Gomer. Hosea, go marry a prostitute, have some kids with her, make her your wife. Your wife is gonna go sleep around, pay some money to get her back, and then require her to live with you, require her to love you, require her to commit to you, require her to repent, to change, the same way that he requires us, right? God understands how that feels. He understands. Think about it. Seven billion people walking this earth. At one point in your life, you were unfaithful to God, or maybe you're being unfaithful to him right now. So think about how God feels when seven billion people are all being unfaithful to him at the same time. Could you? Psh, could you? You can't even handle it when, when one person is being unfaithful. Could you handle the weight of the world like that? Could you handle it? If everybody was being unfaithful to you, like, no, no. But God, he knows what that feels like in a way that we'll never understand. And yet, even though he was upset, even though he was fed up, even though he wanted to call it quits, even though he was pissed off, he said, you know what? I love them. I'm not going to stay angry. I'm not going to, I'm not going to leave them. I'm going to make a way for them to come back to me. I'm, he, he said, I'm going to chase them. I want them, remember? He said, I'm going to court you. I'm going to give you a bouquet. I'm going to win you over through Jesus Christ. Like, does this make sense? I don't know. I just, I wish I could say it the way that I feel it. Like, I wish I could just open up my heart right now so you could see how my heart felt when I was reading this passage. I don't know if it's coming out the right way, but this is the revelation that I caught and it was insane when it hit me in the face. This is God's love for us and this is God's love for you. Even though you're, you're not perfect, even though you have flaws, even though you're sinful, even though you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, once you understand how much God loves you, you'll, you will put all that stuff away. You will repent once you understand how much God loves you. Like, what? The, 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 the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness that God has for us is insane. As humans, 
we need Jesus to be that loving and that forgiving and that merciful. Without Jesus, none of us would do that. We, we wouldn't. We wouldn't do that. If somebody cheated on you without Jesus, like before Christ, if somebody cheated on you, would you really look at them in the face and, and marry them? Would you forgive them off the bat? Would you like, no, you'd probably go crazy, you know, get a Louisville slugger to both headlights, slash a hole in all four tires, baby next time you'll thank before you cheat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So now that I've pretty much done my best at explaining this, I actually do have a couple of Bible verses to compare. When I was reading it, like it was just like flashing, like the comparison between Hosea and the gospel of Jesus Christ, the words that God spoke to Hosea and the things that were happening in Hosea compared to the words that Jesus spoke and what he did for us, you know? So the first thing I'm going to compare is Hosea 1 and 2 with Mark so 2, in Hosea 1, 11, God is clearly telling us that there will be a day when Judah and Israel will be assembled as one people and they will all choose a single leader. We know that this leader is Jesus Christ. But I'm going to compare that to 1 Corinthians 12, 12. It says the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts and though it, all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit into the body of Christ. Hosea 2, 1, we see that God says, rename your brothers God somebody. Rename your sisters all mercy. Remember when God was so fed up, he was so upset, he was so hurt by, by our unfaithfulness that he said, you have become nobody to me and I have become nobody to you. Name your daughter no mercy because I have no mercy. I have no more forgiveness. But then he says, look, I felt this way but I'm going to forgive you. So rename your sons, God's somebodies and rename your daughters all mercy because they have received my mercy. They have received my forgiveness. So when we compare that to Isaiah 62 two, he like God literally gave them a new name. He gave us a new name. Like he says he will in Isaiah 62 two, it literally says the nations will see your righteousness and all Kings, your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow upon you. He literally says, I will call you by a new name. I will give you a new name the same way he did for us clearly here in Hosea, you know, back when this was happening. Guys, like, are you seeing what's happening here? Like, I hope you're seeing what's going on, on the right term now. of God's love for us as it's clearly shown all throughout scripture and what Jesus did for us. In Hosea 3, God tells Hosea to love his wife. He's like, yo, love your wife, even though she's cheating on you, even though she's unfaithful, even though she's sleeping around with people, love your wife the way that I love my people, even though they're cheating on me, even though they're flirting with idols, they're flirting with false gods, they're doing all these sinful things. Hosea, love your wife the way that I love my people. And so I compared that to Ephesians 5, 25 through 27, where it says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without a stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. It's literally the same. It's the same. You understand like it's Hosea 1 through three, like it's showing us the gospel, the, the gospel before the gospel. It's all the same gospel. Like, remember what? Hosea was in the Old Testament. This is before Jesus stepped on the scene here, right? Like it, it, it I don't, it's just crazy. It's just crazy to me. This was before Jesus was physically here. God was using Hosea and Gomer as an example of his love for us. And even now this, this passage, this scripture helps us now to understand God's love for us. The same things that God is telling Hosea is the same things that Jesus was preaching to us about when he came here. It's the gospel. It's his love that leads to repentance. Now, when I think about that, I think about Gomer, you know, how she was sleeping around with men. She, Hosea married her knowing, right? Like Hosea married her knowing that she was a prostitute. So I assume that she didn't feel the need to change, to stop doing what she was doing because he already loved her as she was. And this happens to us. When we start following Jesus, when we choose Jesus, most of the time, I've been through this myself, I'm not speaking for everybody, but most of the time we, fa we fall short. 
we make mistakes, we bump, we fall. But a lot of cases, people choose Jesus, they receive him into their heart, right? They choose Jesus and they continue living a sinful life. You know, they're, they're lukewarm. They keep doing the same things. They don't feel the need to change because they don't understand how deeply God loves them yet. And we see that in Hosea. You know, Hosea loved his wife and God told him, hey, I'm going to use you as an example so the world can see I love them the way that you love your wife, right? Like, guys, come on, you gotta catch it. You gotta catch it. I'm throwing it at you, catch and it. And I tell people that it's the love of God that leads to repentance. Like that's what led me to repentance, God's love, right? It is his love that leads us to change. It's his love that leads us to repent. So when, when Hosea paid for his wife to come back, and he told her, look, enough is enough. You're living with me. I'm living with you. This is it. He's like, that, 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 that's the way that God's telling us, you know, um, I will live in you. You will live in me. We are one. You're not going to live this way anymore. You're going to live with me. You're going to repent, right? So I assume that Gomer finally understood how deeply her husband Hosea loved her when he was willing to buy her back. I mean, they were already married, you know? He was willing to buy her back, his own wife, knowing what she was doing. I assume that she, that she finally understood how deeply this man really loved her, and it led her to stop doing what she was doing. It led her to repentance. The same way it needs to happen with us. We need to repent. When we understand God's love for us, it will lead us to that repentance. In Hosea 3, 2, we see that Hosea bought his wife back, right? Like he literally paid for his wife. And, in, and when you compare that to 1 Corinthians 7, 23, it literally says you were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. His wife was a prostitute, a slave to men. 1 Corinthians 7, 23, you were bought with a price. Jesus paid the price. Jesus was the price. He paid the cost for you. You were a slave to your sin. You were a slave to men. You were a slave to pornography. You were a slave to homosexuality. You were a slave to ad addiction. Whatever it was, you were bought at a price. God was using Hosea to show us his characteristics, to show us how he loves us. I hope you guys are and catching this. And you know, Hosea this. told his wife, you're living with me, I'm living with you, enough is enough. Like, right, like calling her to repentance. In 2 Corinthians seven ten. It literally says, it literally says, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. This is the godly sorrow. Like this, this is exactly what God is showing us in Hosea. Repentance. His, his wife, Gomer, repented. You know, hey, I'm done. I'm gonna live with you. You're gonna live with me. We're husband and wife. I am in you. You are in me. We are one because Hosea loved her. It was the love that Hosea was showing her that led her to feel the, the sorrow, that led her to feel the weight of what she was doing, that led her to feel like, oh man, like this man really loves me. I'm sleeping around, like how could I do this? And it leads her to repentance. And this is the godly sorrow that leads us to repentance. When God, when you understand how much God loves you, you're gonna feel the godly sorrow. Sorrow. You are going to feel the weight of your sin. You're going to be like, oh, how could I do this? You don't even wanna do it anymore. And it leads you to repentance that brings salvation. Honestly, I could go on and on and on. I'm just blown away. Like I've literally been studying this all day because it's blowing my mind. Like I have all my Bibles here. I have my journal right here. Like I have literally been diving deep into this all day because it's crazy. So I really hope that this was helpful for you guys to understand God's love for you. If you do not have a Bible, get one and start reading Hosea, okay? Unless you're a baby, if you just started Christian, if you just became a Christian, go and read the Gospels, amen? But if, if, if you feel me on this, go and read Hosea so that you guys can get to understand just how deeply God loves you, just how deeply sin hurts him. Understanding repentance, understanding mercy, understanding God's love. Hosea is that yeah. book, fam. Yeah, I just, I wanted to share that with you guys because it really touched my heart and it really like woke me up to the fact that like, he, he just loves us, you know, he loves us regardless. Knowing how we are, choosing us still, wanting us still, willing to forgive us still is crazy. 
So I really encourage you guys to go and read Hosea. I'm not even halfway done with it and I love it so far. I've read up to chapter five. I love it. I love it and it, it's, it's convicting. You're gonna get convicted hardcore, but you will also understand how much God loves you. Like Hosea is the gospel of Jesus Christ before he was even here physically. You feel me? Like that's the gospel that he, that God loves us so much that he sent his only son to pay the price for our sins, you know, so we could live with him forever. That's the gospel in Hosea. Before Jesus was physically on this earth, it, the gospel was already there. It was already spoken just in a different way, in a different parable, in a different, you know, way. And now we have the gospel of Jesus Christ that wraps everything up and makes it complete. It's crazy. It's crazy. But anyways, guys, I hope this video made sense. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, click that thumbs up button. If you didn't, click the thumbs up anyway, because duh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you want to see. Give me some video suggestions, you guys. I have so many ideas and topics that I still have to talk about, but I love to hear from you. So leave a comment down below. Click that notification bell. That way you guys do not miss out on any of my new videos. You will get notified when I go live or when I upload a video. So click that notification bell, subscribe, smash that subscribe button and click on that join button. That way you guys get access to one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with me, discounts on my merchandise, Dies, never before seen footage behind behind the scenes all types of crazy stuff yes again i got merchandise coming pretty soon and really quickly guys something went left with my email all right so if you have emailed me there i, I haven't seen it um i'm probably gonna have to make a new email so i apologize in advance but anyways i love you guys jesus loves you guys and i will see you guys next time Mwah.